we got ourselves another date episode into a photo shoot, which almost sounds like a date. I'm not really sure. I was a little bit scared because there was an Ikim in there, but it's fine because it's a manager and the manager and Yamada, they cannot have relations. Hey, what's going on there? I think that he thought that they were dating because of how Ichikawa and Yamada kind of interact and how Yamada has been telling him everything because she's such a pure hearted girl. And the question of how will this relationship affect her career as modeling is like a big problem. Was it going to hinder it? Is it going to help it? I'm not really sure. Is it going to create a divide or is it going to cause Ichikawa to like chase after her more? We'll find out. Let's see what's going to happen in today's reaction. Farewell address to the graduating class. So this must be what I saw in the ending when it looked like he was at some sort of podium doing a speech. <laughs> Rejected. Why Ichikawa though? Why'd you pick him? <laughs> sure. Huh, second highest? Wow. Here comes Adachi. Here comes Adachi. Yamada, cheer him up. Say like, wow, I love guys that gives graduating speeches in middle school. Wow, I love those kind of people. And he's gotta be like, huh? Okay, I'll do it. Just stared him into doing it. Okay. It's just a rehearsal, not the real thing. We'll see. Opening. Rehearsal? Fuck, he's doing it already. Senpai! Yo! A speech to Senpai pretty much. Well, he's the graduating class though, right? This is gonna be interesting. Just a rehearsal. Fun fact. I was nominated school valedictorian by the people through votes. But during the speech rehearsals, I probably shouldn't have read the real speech. I should have gave them like a PG-13 speech. I was a little bit too spicy with the speech, potentially shitting on some teachers. <laughs> and then I got kicked off the valedictorian role. <laughs> someone else, they got a safer candidate to do the speech because I am a PR disaster. <laughs> but instead, I um, was able to play the piano instead. I, I played Claire de Lune piano in my graduation ceremonies. That, I, I had that at least, but yeah. I, they like, I, the speech was way too spicy. I don't know why I thought that it was a smart thing to fucking rehearse with the real speech. I should have gone with like a PG-13 and dropped the fucking nuke on them during the real thing. <laughs> That's a lot of people. <laughs> That's actually impressive that he is so quiet despite a mic being there. Wow. Very charismatic. Come on, bro. Can't hear shit. People are sleeping. Who is there? He's a nervous. Oh, that rehearsal was. Ooh, that rehearsal was a f terrible. Ooh. I mean, did we expect him to just go up and ace it immediately? No. Now the development's gotta happen. Maybe this will maybe practice harder and then he'll do the real speech too later. Yeah, sure, trouble. Public speaking is scary, man. Oh. Oh? Oh. <laughs> okay, this is getting pretty uh, heat. <laughs> Didn't even know where the diaphragm was. Put her head right at the fucking belly. Bitch, the diaphragm's up there. You lying. What would be a good way to calm his nerves during the speech? I think that public speaking is definitely scary. I definitely get scared too when I do public speaking, but I kind of throw myself in those situations and over time I've gotten so much exposure therapy that it just feels normal. But I think a way that could work for Ichika is if Yamada gave him the tip of just look at me, right? Just stare at me and just do the speech. Because no matter what, there's going to be the huge audience. But if he's able to only focus and look at her, then maybe he can zone out everyone else and he can give like a proper speech. But the problem with this rehearsal practice is that this doesn't do shit. Anyone can read a speech out through a script in front of one person. It's, but it's, it's the actual fucking massive audience that shocks you. You cannot like prepare for that.
I know this feeling. I played piano in the past too. Me too. I was like forced into piano festival competitions when I was in like grade four or something. And oh my God, I was so nervous. Cause like you have to go there and you have to like, like while I was waiting for other people, other kids to, you know, do their thing. I was like fucking airplane piano. Cause like you can't read off of sheet music. It's supposed to be all memorized. So like, I'd be like, oh fuck, what if I fuck this up? It, it was so nerve wracking. But after you go and do it, you might fail, but after you go and do it a couple of times, it, it feels more and more casual. But I remember being so fucking panicked to the point where I'm like, holy shit, what part? How do I even play this part again? Huh. Wow, that's actually so true? The fuck? He definitely read that online. He didn't come up with that. That is so profound though. Mm. Try your best. <gasps> Who's coming? <gasps> Confession! Senpai? Senpai! Senpai! I wonder if that's someone else's Yamada. Because like this is not the girl that was getting treated like a side girl before in the previous episodes. I don't think this is a new brand new girl. Wonder who that someone really is. Oof. Yeah. Ow, it is Yamada. But like, you know you have no chance. She doesn't like anything to do with you. And you've seen another dude with her the entire time. At a certain point, if you're so aware of social awareness, like, like his entire thing was, I know when I have a chance to go, right? I understand what like the vibes of when to commit and when to back off. Like right now is a time to back off. You're just being kind of stubborn right now. Yamada heard that. I kind of do. How does that make you feel, bro? Oh? Wow! Nothing like someone to push him and give a little fire in his ass to motivate him like Senpai, bro. Even like last episode, when they were doing like the farewell thing, right? And he was about to start waving. He just knocked that shit down and started waving. Senpai Loki is pushing him forward so much too, indirectly. Stand proud! Stand proud? Okay. You need more aura. Oh, the trophies he won. Nice. What happened? He was so proud. Flexing. He had that ego. It all got shattered afterwards, right? We know what happened with the kids, like the private school kids that went off, and he started to do more reclusive things to cope, right? Something changed. The ego disappeared. <laughs> Bro peaked. Bro peaked in kindergarten. I've fallen a long way from my old self. Bro is like 14. And he's already peaked. He's washed right now. This is a fucking redemption arc for him. Yeah. Oh, whoa! The fuck? Thanks, sis. Haircut? 2,000 yen haircut? How is he gonna... Is he actually gonna cut his hair? Like... Is he going to start looking more and more like our idealized schizo Kyotaro? Reservation. Yeah, I guess some, everyone is different. I just go and just improv. It's just casual conversation. But like, he needs an actual fucking talking point. It's like, oh shit, stick to the script. What are we talking about here? Hobbies, video games, Apex Legends, manga, Edo Ghoul, which I'm assuming is Tokyo Ghoul, Shukujutsu Tyson, Jujutsu Kaisen, movies, Poopa Effect, sorry, I don't watch movies, I don't get that reference, club, data processing club, I have yet to see this motherfucker actually participate in club activities. We are two seasons and multiple episodes deep. I haven't seen him in that club, bro, that's a fake club. No club, because of cram school. Fresh look. Part apostrophe, no change, bangs down to eye, sideburn shape, neck too. I want him to have that hairstyle that, you know, his schizo idealized version of himself has. Maybe, oh, yeah, this is actually looking pretty good. Hold up, hold up. But it, like, it depends. Sometimes, like, having small talk is annoying. 
and some people actually enjoy it. If two introverts kind of meet, it's fine. You can just kind of just quietly just do that. <laughs> Yo, it's looking clean. Oh, damn! Brother turned into a fucking webtoon character. He got that webtoon fucking shave size. <laughs> Basically my haircut. <laughs> right? What is my haircut? It's just three meter, three millimeter on the sides, right? But then like two part, right? There's, there's this, the part right here, you two part and you make a little foof. You make a little foof. And, the, and that's, that's the <laughs> default Korean webtoon character. <laughs> it's, everyone has this haircut for a lot of like Asian people. I think, uh, the, I think like the meta right now for a lot of kids is the broccoli haircut, right? Where it's just this perm all the way down like this. But I enjoy the webtoon hairstyle. It's uh, it makes sense. Right? Not a lot of hairstyles and anime hairstyles like fucking Yu-Gi-Oh characters, Beyblade characters, right? Goku. Doesn't really make sense. Backside, it's the same shit. Three millimeter all the way on the sides and then just long enough for this shit. I think like this hairstyle actually kind of translate well into like reality. But a lot of anime hairstyles do not. 5,000 yen haircut, bro. He's looking more and more like back in the day, man. That old hairstyle. I, that hairstyle really did look better. I wonder how much Yamada's gonna like this. What? Why are you crying? Are you proud? Here we go. You look pretty good, bro. Why does it look so different after one day? It's so relatable. Because obviously at the fucking hairstylist, they know how to style the hair. There's a lot of different techniques and products and shit they put in to make it look really nice. You don't know how to do that, so obviously it's gonna be like deflated afterwards. Yamada, what you think? Hmm? Oh yeah! What do you think? <laughs> you look rich! <laughs> Lady, what can I say? 5,000 yen haircut! Yeah, I know, I'm a little bit ballin'. Where'd I get that money? <laughs> Mom gave it to me. Yeah, sure. Hair product. Oh, she's gonna style for him? <laughs> Stole Adachi's hair wax. I put no hair product in my hair. It's all natural. All natural. No wax. No nothing. No nothing. It's it's just I don't I don't need it. I don't I don't know. I find it easy to just style my hair once you just get out of the shower and just blow dry it. The wax and the hair product and gel, it gets all sticky and messy. It's just annoying. I don't know. I hate that shit. Oh, okay, let's go, Serena. Oh, uh, y'all not getting jealous? What, what is this? How, 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 how do you want to style it? <laughs> <laughs> bro, he became fucking Tokyo Revengers character, bro. It's a pompadour delinquent. Put him in Windbreaker. <laughs> no, you ruined the hair. <laughs> oh my god, he's about to nut. Yeah, bro has a harem. He low-key does it. It's not a harem. But he's surrounded by women. Well, it's Yamada and her friends. But like, who would have thought, right? Who would have thought in season one episode one that we'd get here? Ribbon. What's up, Bayashi? Bayashi what? Huh. You see two birds out in the windows flocking about like they're mating. Why is she realizing that she's getting replaced slowly but surely? Because like even in like the chocolate episode, right? She felt like she's out of place. She she is really out of place, right? Yamada's boyfriend is Bayashi, but now you know the real boyfriend is kind of showing up. What's Bayashi gonna do now? All over? School? Mm. Yeah. Wonder if we're gonna get split. <laughs> the hair just returned back to normal. All that wax is fucking pointless. It just, it's just the regular base hair that we started off with. Oh goodness. Sunlight. Jesus, sunlight. Do you think that the author is gonna let them be split up? If splitting up means that it's gonna advance the romance more than yes, but like either or, the author will figure out a way to make it good. <laughs> Are we in the speech? Is it speech? <laughs> yeah, he does. And she likes it that way. Serena is so shy. Not shy. She's a little... She takes compliments weirdly. She's shy. That's your hair 
cut. Bro brought the haircut script and left the speech script at home. I hope you have that shit memorized, bro. Honestly, a speech is something that you should not be reading off a script. At worst, you need to have little talking points on like a sticky pad. But if you want to command and have a presence over the audience when you talk, you can't be reading a script. You need to fucking look at people. Do you see Donald Trump reading off a fucking script? No. He fucking improvs. Who knows what he's saying, but he says it with such confidence that he has that aura. Joe Biden reading off a fucking teleprompter. Weak ass energy. You need to just have that confidence to command a room without reading a script and then it becomes more authentic. The people are like, damn, I want to listen to you. But if you have your head down just reading off a script, who the fuck is going to respect you? Sister gonna clutch? Alright. I don't know, what's he gonna find there? Nah, just YOLO it. Just improv, improv. Come on. The declaration. Come on, let's go. You can do this. You can definitely do this. I believe in you. The thought? Yeah? Okay, it's a good luck charm now? <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna help him do the speech. That ain't no fucking script, but symbolically, it's just kind of give him more confidence, I guess. You got a scooter. Oh no! Don't crash! Oh my god, it's the Kohai at work! It's him again! From the Takoyaki stand! Oh, he's an alumni! Clutch! Clutch! Part of me kind of hopes that she doesn't make it in time to give it to him, but we'll still watch the speech, and Isuka will be able to deliver a presentation that he doesn't have to read off the script, but it's still so good, and his sister can witness it and everyone can witness it. Kind of want that kind of outcome. Bald! Bald! She gonna make it? That would be the most cringe excuse. Oh my fucking god, if you pull this shit on the graduation, no one would even think that it's like funny. Like, oh, that would be so cringe. Oh. Bye, she's just falling asleep as usual. Crying. The teachers are crying. The teachers are getting so emotional. Is it gone though? Or did you seal it? Idealize me, where are you? Hmm. Potentially Moiko. I like that theory. That Moiko actually found it on the side of the road, hung it up by the tree branch. Then acted as if, oh, you know, Yamada, you know, then Yamada, I think Moiko might have done that shit in my head canon. Oh. Hey, no time, no time, come on. Too late, it's too late. Believe in me who believes in you? Yamada? Me, I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh, this is fucking cooking right now. Now, I wonder how they're going to actually do the speech. Because, like, he can't just go off for five minutes and giving a whole ass speech. I wonder how they're going to actually, like, animate the speech. They can't just, like, have the whole thing. We'll see how this goes. It's me. <laughs> Dude, if he fucking kissed him here. <laughs> could you imagine? If he actually kissed himself, holy shit. Stole his first kiss. Schizo kiss, bro. Let's go! Oh my god, it's getting intimate. All right, lock in, let's go. Loud and proud. Good start. <laughs> that is such a low bar of expectations. Wow, we can actually hear him. Even the senpai here is amazed. Oh, teacher's so proud. 
Sister! Alright, now it's time to YOLO. Oh shit, what's he gonna say? Just end it off by saying something good, like I wish you all the best of luck or something, and just end it. Like, what are you gonna say? Confession. Fuck it. Just confess to Yamada right now in front of Senpai. Just make it so personal. Ruin Senpai's graduation ceremony by cucking him right now in front of the entire school. Declare your love for Yamada and say, fuck you, drop the mic and walk away. Now, wouldn't you think that's an amazing moment? I don't think Ichika was built for that. But oh my god, could you imagine? Oh. Everything he's saying right now is kind of like projection. Because he's exactly describing what he's doing right now. Right? You need to move yourself forward. This is scary, but you can do it. It's speaking from the heart because it's so relatable. Mm. Oh yes. I have seen the light every fucking episode and I'm afraid that the lights are about to flash his suit. I think it's coming. Carte! Where is it? Even Narachi is impressed. Yeah, he's like speaking like he's graduating. Wow. Bro, he's improv so hard right now! Bro, what the fuck is this haircut buff? He gets one haircut, suddenly he just becomes like a fully actualized human. Talks about from the bottom of his heart all the things that's so scary to him. But because he knows it, first and foremost, he can speak on it and so authentic and genuine. Everyone was moved there. That was a great improv speech at the end. Even Adachi, man. That was sick. You nailed it. Oh! He back! That ego is back from his kindergarten days. Prime Ishikawa is back! Nah, you move forward there. Been a while since we've been to the nurse's office. Senpai! Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Empty your <laughs> Well, I wonder. Is he appreciative of the speech? What is Senpai here to do? Ugh. Really, bro? I you need to I thought that he would give up and be like, you know what, Isko? That was a great speech. And he moves on. But he's still fucking going for Yamada in this moment when you find her with him in the fucking nursery room. Come on, dude. Don't go. Oh, here's the bear. He's a dog chain. Okay. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> He'll get out of bed immediately. <laughs> I mean, even that episode, he did move forward there. And it really did start with Senpai kind of like making Ishikawa, you know, insecure and jealous that makes him move forward, right? Even from episode one and until now. A lot of the moments were really pushed because of Senpai. He's like a catalyst to the story. Did always watch. Did he? Is that the girl that got rejected? No, it's the other girl. This is the side girl that we saw at the New Year's Eve. This あ、遊んでる方が楽しいし、その点、山田さんはすごいよね。俺とは違って yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Make your point clear. Sunlight! I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo! The reversal! Because he did the same line earlier in this episode to the guy! He's like, sorry, there's someone else I like. Ooh, how do you like that one? 
damn. It's Kawa. You know it's you. <laughs> my hands are full. I can't place that second fucking button in my hands. No. we. It's the fucking dogs, bro. We gotta have that dog in us. So good. Carte! Mm. It's you. It's you. Yes. What is the percentage right now? Are we on five out of six episodes? Yamada has cried. That's a that's a crazy fucking percentage, bro. Like every episode, pretty much almost every episode, she's crying. That's crazy. Okay. You know what? I can respect that. Right? He's not trying to be creepy here. He knows his place. He, he shot his shot, right? Fair. Gets rejected. Moves on. Now, I wonder how he really feels in, like, in private. Wonder. Because like, obviously, he's trying to keep a good face right now as he walks away. Wonder how he really feels in private. <laughs> no. That's so creepy. <laughs> That's actually creepy. You're not being slick. <laughs> All right, now that I got rejected, I'm going to send you a message. I got your uh, line info by talking to some other dude. So yeah, I'll talk to you later. I, I... That's weird, man. Like, you got to fucking know your place at times. Like, he's... this is weird. <laughs> was that one last dig at Ichikawa? It was. It was one last fucking bait. Never happened. He said that shit just to get on his nerves. It was. This motherfucker, dude. And then Yamada immediately says, nah, fuck off with that shit. <gasps> Yamada likes me. Cart 18. Hold up. Wait, is he cooking? <laughs> is Senpai cooking right now? <laughs> Did he do that so that he could finally seal away his presence away from Yamada and now Yamada and Ichika will forever be together? No, regardless, it was gonna fucking happen. Like, what? Wait, what? 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 What was that, bro? bro? <laughs> Huh. Oh. What happened? The confession. Not the confession, but you know. He's yeah, it's a little awkward now. <laughs> what? What? Are you... What? Are you... <laughs> no! No! They were just alone after saying some intimate shit and felt awkward and left. What do you fuck? You would jump to that conclusion? That's crazy! <laughs> That's today's episode of Dangers in My Heart. Oh my god, yo, what the fuck was that ending line, dude? What? I honestly can't tell. Like, Senpai's a piece of shit. But he had a kind of cool moment, I guess, where he's like, then she'd love me out of sympathy because the story with the soccer was false. But no, I don't feel like she would even love him out of sympathy. No matter what he would have said, Yamada's heart has been reserved for each Ichikawa first and foremost. Senpai, kind of weird, kind of creepy. I'm kind of conflicted about him because he does exist to move the story forward and make each cow be more aggressive, but some of that stuff at the end is like, eh, I don't know. And like, what the fuck is up with this girl, bro? Like, what is up with this girl? She is the biggest cuck. My god. Like, why are you chasing him? He doesn't see you that way. Do you have no self-respect? Do you have no sense of dignity? He treats you like a side hoe. And that's why you're a side hoe right now. But again, I'm imposing these ideals upon fucking middle school kids. Why am I expecting to understand properly? A horny girl that is down for a senpai, of course she's gonna keep you know, chasing after him even though she feels good. She gets, you know, treated like that. I don't know. And she is one of the fucking losing heroines, bro. I get, she gets no fucking sympathy. You wanna be treated as a fucking doormat? You get stepped on. Aside from that, the things that a haircut can do for a man. The haircut buff is insane. Bro's egoist came out like this is fucking blue lock. 
Bro, he hit us at that line, you ignoramus. Don't feel like we're the same, bro. We're I'm different. The speech there was fantastic, right? The first half, he kind of memorized the script, but the, after that, what was he going to do? He reached in to his own insecurities and how he feels about moving forward and all the lessons that he's learned and gives an amazing speech that resonates within the hearts of many. That was a fantastic speech. This is a fantastic episode. And now... It's not a confession, but Yamada pretty much implicitly says, I like someone else, right? And the reason why they all left so quickly is because they were alone in their room, fully over what just happened, and be like, uh oh, what are we gonna do about this, right? So from here on out, it's gonna get more spicy. But and that's it from me. If you're still here though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video, check out the other playlist for more content, and until next time, take care.